Hey guys, welcome to the final installment of Logically Thinking for 2012. Now the first order of business. My motherboard, dead. Lots of issues with it. Uh, was having some power issues as well as some other things with it. And uh, thankfully got a replacement motherboard for a completely different model because this was the second time I tried the same manufacturer of motherboard Gigabyte and the same motherboard and the issues continued from the first one. So I got pissed. Uh, thankfully, the second Gigabyte motherboard I had uh, was still eligible for Amazon return, so sent it back to them, got a different motherboard completely, installed it yesterday, seems to be working great, it's actually a lot better motherboard altogether, and not having some of the issues I was having. With that being said, I had to do a fresh install, and I decided to try Windows 8, for better or worse, uh, kind of a weird operating system. It's definitely performance-wise pretty decent, but I don't like Metro. I don't like the fact that they got rid of the start menu and uh, thankfully there's a program you can get that will actually bring back a start menu in the sense which is really handy but trying to get used to Windows 8 and want to see what's compatible with it not what's not compatible with it so working on installing my video editing applications my VSTs as well as my entire Steam library because it didn't back up correctly when I did it so that's about 400 gigabytes worth of downloading I'll be doing in the next two days good times there so with the new year rolling around, uh, one of my big new year's resolutions is going to be interacting with the gaming community more. And I interact with a lot of my commenters. Uh, a lot of my commenters I either follow on Twitter or they follow me on Facebook or whatever. But I don't really go out of my way to talk to people in the community. You know, there's a lot of people out there who do response videos or they do tag videos and stuff like that, or they comment a lot on uh, other videos. I, I really don't do any of that stuff. Um, it, it's not because I don't want anything to do with the gaming community. It's just, I've always been more of that lurker status than anything else. And that's something I kind of want to change. I want to interact with people more on a gaming community outside of just my videos. So you're going to see me doing a lot more response videos, a lot more tag videos, just so I can kind of put myself out there more with the community. I'm, I'm not a gaming hermit. I do like interacting with people. And it's something that, uh, unfortunately, I'm kind of getting a status of that I just don't like to interact with people in the community outside of what I do. And that's not true at all. So expect to see me interacting with people a lot more. I'd love to do collaborations with other YouTube channels. Uh, may it be in just web content, video content, or whatever. I definitely like to reach out more and kind of eliminate that hermit set. So that's something you can definitely look forward to next year is me interacting with other channels. So yeah, before my motherboard took a dump on me, I was going to do my top five games of the year. And unfortunately, because of that, I wasn't able to do it. Uh, so maybe something I'll do in the future. But in the meantime, I wanted to tell you guys what my game of the year is going to be, and that is The Walking Dead. Now, first off, I've seen two or three episodes of the TV series. Um, I love zombie stuff. It's one of those series that I will get into eventually. But the PC game, whether you're a fan of the show or not, is an excellent game all around. A gripping story, awesome cell shaded looking graphics, and again, just the focus on the story and the gameplay is just phenomenal. You can play it with the gamepad, you can play it with the keyboard and mouse. It's on sale almost constantly on Steam for 14 bucks. It's a hell of a deal. The day I beat it was the day I actually went out and bought it for my friend for Christmas because he's a fan of the show and didn't have a game. It's just great. If you haven't checked it out, definitely do. It's definitely worth it. I think you can actually get the first episode for free on iPad and stuff like that. So check it out. It's my game of the year. I will do more in-depth on what games I thought were the great games of this year. But for now, just go check out The Walking Dead. So on the subject of Gamer Logic Live, we are going to keep doing them. Um, I'd love to get more than one person on Gamer Logic Live, like my little brother playing, because it's it's just a lot more fun with two people. But it is something I plan on continue doing. I am going to go back to a scheduled time with it. You know, we were trying a couple different days to make it work, and I think the Sunday time slot ended up being the best. As far as doing it at 12 o'clock, maybe we'll do it later. I'm not really sure. But uh, Sunday seemed to be the best. Or Friday actually seemed to be pretty decent too. But the point is to try to get people involved with it, especially in the chat. And uh, just kind of go from there. You know, it was really fun playing Snatcher, and which 
I will be going back to just with all the Sega stuff going on all of a sudden. I've been a little leery about doing it. Another thing is I am able to broadcast live on YouTube now due to the Google Hangouts thing being uh, added. The Google Hangouts on air, I think it is. Um, so when I go live on Twitch TV, I'll be going live at the same time on YouTube just so people on YouTube can go, oh, this is going on. And if they want to get a better quality stream, they can head over to Twitch TV. Because especially now that uh, YouTube has changed its format yet again and trying to get subscribers to remember, you know, this is what the broadcast is going to be at a certain time, uh, I think it'll be a lot easier. I think rather than doing weekly videos where I say it's going to be at this time, I'm just going to do one video, I don't think I'm going to do it weekly. I think I'm going to do it maybe bi-weekly or maybe once a month. So we'll see more details on that into 2013. So finally, one of my most requested videos is a tour of my arcade room. I haven't been able to do that. I've done it a few times and either I got a new machine or I got rid of a machine or I had issues with transferring the video due to my motherboard issues, just all this stuff. Well, I was able to actually do a video with all the footage and it, it really didn't turn out how I wanted it to be. My ideal arcade room tour video and actually my ideal console game room tour is going to be with me in front of the camera. Uh, someone else can join the camera. We can actually move around the room and stuff, and I can just kind of casually discuss stuff. Uh, for me, for whatever reason, I just don't like the way I've been doing it, so I want to do this differently. So sometime when time permits, uh, a buddy of mine or maybe my little brother will help me out, and uh, we'll get it done properly. But I know it's been one of the most promised things that I've been do wanting to do for a while, and it's been the most requested. So I did take what footage I had and did a quick montage of some of my stuff down in my arcade room and did a voiceover for it so that'll be at the end of this video that's all i got for now so enjoy that and i will see you guys in 2013 take it easy peace i love console gaming but there's something special about arcade games and pinball machines that really bring me back to my childhood after all, I'm used to an era where 25 cents would get you the best graphics experience, sound experience, and overall play experience for that matter. It's not like today where consoles are the best place to go for graphics and gameplay, and a lot of these are classics that I played as a kid. Now, I own a variety of different machines. Some of them are just your standard arcade cabinet. Some are pinball machines, some are slot machines, and I even have a pachinko machine hiding around there somewhere. But the thing about my arcade is there's plenty of variety. And I guess we'll talk about these pinball machines here first. What's funny about pinball is growing up as a kid, I hated pinball. I didn't like it at all. I think my first real memory I can think of when it comes to pinball is my dad saying to try this out and watching the ball just fly through the center lane and totally wasting 25 cents. And I think that was the biggest thing for me is I just wasted a token on this and it just wasn't visually appealing to me. It wasn't like a video game. I think that was probably one of my biggest mistakes growing up as a kid in the 80s and 90s and having access to a whole bunch of arcades that had tons of pinball machines. When I actually had a chance to play again a pinball machine at the Midwest Gaming Classic about four or five years ago, I couldn't believe that I would made the decision to just totally bypass pinball in general. It was a very sad decision on my point and uh, I, I really regret it. So that's one of the reasons I'm so into pinball now is because I get to try out a lot of stuff I missed in my childhood. Now I have four pinball machines in total, a F-14 Tomcat, a Lady Luck, what you're looking at right here is a Bally Black Pyramid, which is an excellent Indiana Jones slash Egyptian theme, lots of fun there. And this machine you're looking at here is my latest acquisition, and that is a Maverick pinball machine. This is my first DMD pin. I actually did a quick video about this maybe a couple weeks ago, but this is slowly becoming my favorite pin in my lineup just because the DMD and the different rules and skill sets just make it a lot more fun than some of my other machines. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with my other machines, it's just, well, this one's the most playable out of all. My second one would probably be the F-14 Tomcat. That game is so fast, so fun. The other two, Black Pyramid, is a classic game in its own right. Lots of cool shots to do. And the Lady Luck is probably my least favorite out of the four, but I got it for a decent price. And it's very close to actually some of the old EM pinball machines that are around from the 70s and 60s and such. Now here's a look at some of my arcade cabinets. 
I have lots of different fighting games. I'm a big fighting game fan, so the Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Champion Edition, a Neo Geo Cabin, of course, Street Fighter Alpha 3, all sorts of stuff. Huge fighting game fan, but I do have enough boards to make a little bit more variety if people don't like fighting games. This cabinet you're looking at here is actually my first arcade cabinet. A friend of mine gave it to me, and I put it together with the fact that I wanted it as a MAME machine. And MAME is cool, but uh, very intimidating to a lot of visitors when they come over, so I pretty much just decided to make it a straight-up arcade machine. This is a space stool that I converted to a Neo Geo 1 slot. Still have the original control panel and everything, so I'm able to do whatever I need to do if I ever decide to put it back to its original condition. This was an old beat up centipede machine, a cabaret cabinet, just totally destroyed and I got it for free so to make do with it I decided to restore it as much as possible. Of course this is actually a Namco Tekken machine, I believe this is either the original Tekken or Tekken 3. Not a huge Tekken fan, so what I decided to do with this was make a custom Street Fighter 3 Third Strike marquee, print out the movesets and all that, and make it a proper cabinet. Of course, the main reason I loved going to the arcade, of course, was Street Fighter 2. This is Street Fighter 2 Turbo Champion Edition. Love it. Great machine. And another machine I acquired in 2012 was this Neo Geo 2 slot. I had to clean it up a little bit. There was actually an issue with the motherboard. I had to get the motherboard replaced. Leaky caps on the sound as well as some other things, but got a new motherboard for a great deal. I always love the fact that these things came with memory cards and uh, headphone jacks. Never saw anyone use it back in the 90s though. And I do have various artwork littered around my arcade, some from Hanzo Steinbach, uh, there's my wonderful Game Room neon sign, love that thing, nice and bright. Of course there's some Street Fighter artwork and other pieces of art littered around the arcade. This is my Devil May Cry slot machine, very cool, got it for cheap, uh, doesn't get a lot of play, but it's fun nonetheless with a custom Dante top around the top. This is my Donkey Kong Jr. arcade cabinet, cocktail cabinet. Doesn't get a lot of play these days due to another thing I set up, but it does work. The monitor looks great. Every once in a while, I do toss around the idea of selling it, but it's a classic piece of Nintendo history, so that's what pretty much prevents me from doing it. Now here is my latest setup. Now this used to be a jukebox. Um, Actually, originally before that, it was a Cherry Master cabinet, and I decided that I wanted a jukebox so people could listen to stuff in the basement, right? Well, I also have a DJ setup down in my basement, because uh, my studio is down there as well, and most people just to prefer to play stuff on that, on the turntables, or on the laptop, because huge speakers are hooked up to that. So, I did some changes and stuff, and decided to make this into an emulator. Now it plays arcade, it plays NES stuff, it plays all sorts of different things. But the big thing is, is that I have a VGA splitter attached to this. And if you don't want to play games, four player games or one player games on the little 15 inch screen that's hooked up inside the cabinet, well, I have a projection screen for it. And as you can see right now, I am running Ninja Gaiden at about 60 inches here on the NES, and I could pretty much do this with anything, so if people want to play 4-player X-Men, 4-player Dungeons & Dragons, Captain America, pretty much any 4-player arcade game you can think of, we can play it, thanks to MAME. And of course, it's a blast playing old retro stuff like NES and Super NES on this thing, and that is done through emulators as well, and you're able to do that on the Super Nintendo controllers, which is pretty flexible for almost anything was great actually. Uh, I had an arcade night and my wife came home and uh, her and her friend played Dr. Mario on this big screen. I mean, the stuff is so big you could practically grab the pellets with your hand and eat it. So, pretty neat. That's all I got for now guys. Have a good one.